I hope that weren't proper boring. I know what it's like sitting and listening to someone chat shit for two hours. Um, Hello, so you join us this morning outside Doncaster College. I'm going in to talk to like students and stuff. It's probably more scary than it was doing the Doncaster Business Award where there were like six to seven hundred people there that like run businesses and shit. But let's see how it goes. That what? I don't know how that went. I just absolutely spoke waffle for like... Do you know what? <laughs> I think it was really good. He did really well. And do you know what? I think you've got a future as a possible lecturer, I think. Oh, no chance. <laughs> no chance. I would love to see you in the education system at some point. <laughs> yeah. So you know how we always go on about, like we see little spaces and chairs and little cha chairs and tables and stuff like that, and we're like, oh, that, that'd be cool for the podcasting. Well, look at this, an actual room that is built for podcasting. It's not finished yet. Smart though, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, I'm not sure about that sofa. <laughs> weird positioning. <laughs> but how cool would this be for the podcast next year? I rate it. I think it's a good setup. Oh, this I mean, is I what... didn't have this when I came to college at all. <laughs> no. So as some people that have been watching from the beginning will know, like we want to we've our plan's always been to have the office space but also build a studio that people can come and use and stuff. But now I'm thinking, well, this college has already got one. I don't know how much it is, but Sorry. Look at this room here. I could imagine us doing some sort of news channel, Rob. The latest around Doncaster. And like we're sat there and the green screen can be used to have like a skyline of Doncaster. That'd be pretty cool. Pretty that, much film, um, what is it? Match, Match of the, of the day. day. Yeah, yeah. Here's the table that but everything you see on TV is literally all a green screen. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Wow, this is cool. Why could you vlog on this? Warning. This vlog features a Zombie outbreak. <laughs> They're behind there somewhere. Oh, What's going on here? Let's tell them. Look at this stuff. I, I don't even know what to do with it, but it looks really cool, doesn't it? <laughs> what do you do with it then? Explain it to us. So, so these are your camera switches. So those three cameras that are next door, they line up to these three. And then we've got a spare one. So there is like scope for another one if you wanted it. Or you could connect a GoPro to it as well. So it's got quite... You can do all sorts. Um, that's your colour accurate monitor, which is the live feed, mm -hmm. which you, the person switching here gets control of. And then this monitor and this TV both mirror all the cameras. So if you're on direct to producing, you can just see everything overview there. Or if you want to see colour accurate, again, you look through the, through the monitor there. This connect, this does all of the fancy like wipes, transitions, and switching between the cameras. Right, okay. And that's pretty cool. Uh, you can also do some like light sort of title graphics as well on there and ping them up so you can have title cards all preloaded. Um, and then all this stuff here just controls the audio. So you've got the talk back so the person in here can talk to the camera operators. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's the recorder there. So it's all 4K, 4K cameras, TV studio cameras. Yeah. And then that's your audio ins, which, uh, which you hear through these massive speakers yeah setup. so i've heard loads of conversations from loads of different people about how they're building up the creative hub in doncaster and there's like funding for this funding for that mm -hmm. and people want to build like this will very much i had the idea to build the creator pod for a podcast with a roadcaster mm -hmm. but i know that some people within that company were saying what about these like black magic uh, it weren't at this level it was this other thing like a big pad that you get for like editing and stuff yeah like why don't we make it a full like editing mm -hmm. suite and stuff and I'm like, well, you've got it all. So why aren't, why don't everybody just lump in and promote oh, yeah, this yeah, yeah. Yeah. rather than trying to make 10 of them that will probably end up being half arsed in marketing and no one will know about them. So I never went to college. It's been years since you went to college and we've just done a yeah. morning back at college. How did you find it being back at college? I've just said yeah. college 17 times. Back to college, yeah. Um, I mean, to be honest, when I went to college, you can go to Greg's and get two sausage rolls for a pound. Now you can't get one for a pound, so if I'm honest, I'd rather go back to when I used to go. I think though, it went really, really well. It's a lot more, what I found was, it's more difficult speaking to a smaller number of people in a smaller room than it is like the um, awards that I did last year where you talked to like hundreds of people in a huge room. Because you kind of get the feeling no one's really listening to you up on that stage. Oh, are we going, are we not going? <laughs> and uh, I just nearly got run over. But in that small confined space with lots of people in it and the room was packed, um, yeah, you feel like people really are actually listening to what you're saying. Um, but I, I like to think that we got across all the points that 
yeah. are relevant really because all these students I don't know if I've mentioned it so all the students are like media and digital students and filmmaker students and stuff and obviously it relates a lot to what we do um, and I like to think that we just dished out a bit of knowledge basically work hard keep it simple and make it up as you go along yeah so if you're watching this and you've been in that room hey up I guess yeah yeah <laughs> Oh, thanks for being cool yeah, though, because it's like, being... <laughs> especially as like an old person, which I am now, um, it can be quite nerve wracking, I suppose. I don't usually get nervous, but I just felt a bit more, oh, I have to concentrate on this and what I'm saying, because I want to give you value. And if anyone is watching this, by the way, that wants to know anything about the world that we operate in, just message us and let us know. All right, see you in a bit. I'm really glad this morning was extremely interesting, because this afternoon, it's one of those afternoons where it's like, we're just sat at our desk, like, look, he sat at his desk, I'm sat at my desk, he sat at his desk, I'm sat at my desk. There's some snippets of us talking this morning to some college students that study in film and media and digital and all that type of stuff. I suppose I'll just give you a little bit of the story about how I got involved in content because obviously I'm old. So when I were your age, like YouTube weren't even a thing. If you, especially if you're content creators, a big part of what I'd like people to take away from today is you don't even have to be creative. Like I don't feel like I'm creative at all. Rob's way more creative than what I am, but I'm on camera every single day, creating content every single day. But how I first initially did it was I didn't know how to be creative. So instead I documented and that's a big thing. And I think that's what a lot of these biggie like YouTubers and stuff do as well. They don't necessarily, have to be entertaining and create, they just document what they're doing. Especially vloggers. Has anyone heard of Casey Neistat? Podcasting, that's a good one. We're looking to do our podcast again next year. But that's, a, that's another thing that's popular right now, isn't it? Podcasting. Who, who did you watch Stephen Bartlett? When it comes to podcasting, why do you think we've had this sudden, because podcasting was kind of starting to die down a little bit. In your opinion, why do you think podcasting has become popular again? Because Thank you. People um, want to know people. And that's what I think it boils down to with podcasting especially is you've got TikTok. Like TikTok's the biggest thing right now. But you watch a TikTok and how long do they last? Some of them. 15 seconds to like two minutes. Is it three minutes so you can do whatever? So it's a very short form. And it's like a good example. I'm sure people in here have heard of that Andrew Tate fella. Like he's gone mental, hasn't he? And you watch him, but you hear him say one thing with no context whatsoever. So then the flip side, I use him as a good example because he's been taken out of context. Some things people like really agree with him. Some people he polarizes other people because he says some outlandish stuff, but he says outlandish stuff within like 15 seconds. And you think, well, how do I know? And he's just an example, loads of people do it. But podcasting, you get time to sit and talk for an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. You really start to get to know people. So I think, and people want that. They're like, what's the context around this headline I've seen? And you see it all the time, like, I don't watch the news and stuff like that. People probably shouldn't watch news because it's always full of shite, isn't it? But like, when you're watching the news and stuff, all you see is headlines. Like when you go on the internet, you just see headlines all the time. No one sees the full story. And I think that's the difference between social media content and then podcasting. It's social media content is very much headline, headline, headline. Then your social media, your longer form content is very much here's the story behind it. Our daily vlog some days gets like 30 views, 20 views, but it don't mean anything because it's who's watching rather than how many people's watching. And, how, and what we've figured is, if we build our network just around Doncaster and get everybody in Doncaster, all the business in Doncaster to know us, I don't need a million subscribers. Some people will say to us, we've had other video companies go, why do you do that vlog every single day when you only get like 20 views? And I say, well, because, out of those 20 views, 10 people are from Doncaster. Out of those 10, six of them are business owners or their friend's a business owner or their dad's a business owner in Doncaster. And then out of those, two of those people might get in touch with us and say, hey, oh, do we want a video, want a promo video or whatever it is that we're doing. And so every single, and we do that every day, Monday to Friday, I vlog every single day. So if you think about that, if, you, if I would say to you, you're starting a business right now, and you can guarantee generating two potential clients every single day, Monday to Friday. All of a sudden it sounds like, oh, you've cracked this. This is pretty good. So that's how you like manipulate numbers and think about what it is that you're doing, who you're targeting. Advert production, what's that? Production. Produce an advert, I imagine. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean in what way? Like graphics, videos, video it's all video based. To be fair, I started literally over the other side of that corridor. 
um, in 2008. Yeah, create, I did creative media, and at the time it was creative media and screen arts. So it was all, probably what we're most of you covering, a bit of video, a bit of photography, a bit of graphics, a bit of animation at the time as well. Um, but at the end of that, again, like the whole YouTube, the community we were sort of working in now was still quite early doors. So I, this is probably about 2011. So video and stuff, some businesses were using it, but it was a lot of your bigger businesses. A lot of smaller businesses were still in the dark ages and just moving on to like writing stuff for Facebook um, and putting pictures online. So <clears throat> from there, the stuff I thought, oh yeah, cool, I can go to businesses and make videos and do this sort of stuff, just didn't really go anywhere because people didn't really want it. Whereas now, like you say, because of the pandemic, people are switching online more. Um, so there is more of a market out there. So from the course you're doing, as someone that actually did pretty much that course, <laughs> it's a good opportunity to lead into certain things. And like you say, we're building a portfolio. Um, something we didn't do actually at the time was utilize things, mainly on Facebook really, because um, that was big back then. None of you are <clears> on Facebook, are you? Or you've got it, There's but you like, don't it's use not, it. It's yeah. not as popular now, Facebook, is it? Yeah. But like, at the time, if you'd made like a Facebook sort of page or something and put your work there and started building some sort of portfolio, because particularly I found in this sort of industry it isn't just down to like, oh yeah, I've got this in English, maths, etc., etc. It doesn't really matter. It's more about what you've produced. So you can have no grades whatsoever and be really good at producing something. And that means way more than just handing someone a little sheet of paper with some numbers <laughs> on. Yeah, we shouldn't say that. Yeah, no, we shouldn't say we that. We shouldn't college. say that, but it's true. <laughs> the grades don't matter as much as you think. Try hard. I, I've got 17, 18 year old daughters who have just gone through like GCSEs, A levels and all the rest of it. And I was Sorry. saying to them, try your hardest because why not? You're here, you may as well crack on and do it, aren't you? But ultimately, from an employer's point of view, if one of you come to me and we're like, my grades aren't amazing, but look at this portfolio work and you are like a proper shit or editor for video and it's all cool stuff. I'm hiring you because of that, because that's what I want. I'm not really that bothered about like what grade you got, although you still try hard. Yeah, yeah you still like, to get some grades. But, it, but that's, <laughs> what, that's the beauty of an online portfolio. So what we do is we're building an online portfolio through YouTube. So people are watching our vlog every single day. Obviously, only a few of them. I wish there were more. But... They're watching the vlog every single day on how we're building this company. So they get to know us over time. And a lot of the work we get now is because of the portfolio we built up. But that's where we're at. And nine months in, we're doing all right. We make a little bit of money. The rent's paid every single month. So that's where we're at. The things that have got us there quickly were networking with people. So networking is really cool. And even networking with each other, because you don't know whose dad works at so-and-so or whose cousin does this, or even where some of you are gonna end up. So like in five years time, one of you might've got a really cool digital media marketing job or whatever. And then another one of you is looking to move jobs. And then you're like, oh, you know, we went to college together and stuff. So networking and building a network of friends and people that you know is massively important. That's helped us loads. And the other thing, is consistency and this is we do some social media with some companies and they're always saying to us like oh we want to get you know thousands of followers and loads of likes on our pictures and all of that sort of stuff and then we explain like what i was talking about earlier it's who's looking at your content not how many people's looking at your content Oh, favourite company I work with is Rustic Pizza in Walmart because I get free pizza <laughs> all the time. So they're definitely my favourite. It has its pros and its cons, I'm not yeah. going to lie to you. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the vlog, you'll see this clip where they're just sat there eating pizza. Yeah, yeah. They're my favourite. <laughs> Who, Who else, else have we with? Go on. Yeah, yeah, no. So there'll be the odd people that have um, a certain project with a certain budget. So that'll just be a one-time thing. But that's part of networking with people and talking to people as much as we do. You get comfortable talking with people. People hopefully then like you. You do a good job. Um, and a lot of our businesses repeat business. I, I, won't, I don't know how to put a percentage on it, but... I'd say, I'd say I'd majority. say like... majority, yeah. Like there's one company or one section um, within this big company that have like, I think we've worked with them about four times in like nine months on decent sized projects as well. It's definitely not all good. There's a company right now that are like all singing, all dancing, look really, really cool, but they're absolute comments. And like, and they, and I, so I can't tell you who they are, but um, <laughs> like they just they don't pay. Oh, 
oh. like that's a that's an issue so yeah if any of you are like looking to not just go at this as a job or the different various jobs that are available but actually set up on your own think about early doors what your business plan looks like it doesn't have to be massively in depth but definitely one of my biggest pieces of advice is for actual business any business is think about your cash flow and money up front but yeah no it's not all we we're quite lucky because when we started, Rob had already spent years building up this network of people. I'd already spent years building up this network of people. So a lot of our early work came from people we already knew. I'm convinced most of our work is, well, we already, we kind of know. Most of the work <coughs> we get is through the vlog. Yeah, you can trace a lot of it back. Like, people don't directly say like, oh yeah, I've watched this thing. <laughs> like, but when you start having conversations with people, um, yeah, it does trace back. Because um, I'd say, we always say it, like, our work, there's always going to be someone that creates something better. Because where I went wrong in the past was always trying to, I'd look, I'd create something, be like, oh, this is cool. And I'd look online and be like, oh, but their work's better. Because I do weddings as well. I know you do as well. Um, Who's the best wedding photographer? <laughs> well, he does videos, so me. <laughs> oh, uh, who's the best wedding videographer? Yeah, I don't know, I have to put a coin or something. Uh, <laughs> I think you should have a fight. <laughs> <laughs> but like, <clears throat> yeah, with weddings, like that's really easy. You'll probably know as well. Like, when you're doing like that, you'll go online, you'll see somebody else's wedding work, and you're like, oh, Jesus, like, that's ridiculous compared to what I've produced. So you're like, oh, is mine that good? I don't know. And then you'll see somebody else's, and you think, actually, yeah, no, mine's pretty good. Um, and obviously that comes down if you're working out pricing and that sort of stuff. That's a whole new ball game. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, it's quite easy to be, always be constantly chasing to try and be the best in something. So whether that is editing, whether it's producing a podcast, whether it's producing just general video, um, It'd be cool to be the best, but there's always going to be someone better at something. But you're never going to be the worst either. So that's one of the easy, well, first things for me that I'd recommend trying to get break away from is always chasing to be the best all the time and is just trying to improve on what your last project was because then you'll always be satisfied and that's what prevents people putting stuff out there. Maybe if you're going to start something and put it out as like a business or an idea or something, you might have some sort of like, is it imposter syndrome? I think it is, isn't it? Yeah. Creeping. You're like, oh, someone else is doing this. It's a bit better than what I'm doing. So I'll keep building it a bit. <clears throat> but then you never actually start doing anything. So if you don't start, you never know if it's going to work or not. It, we're guilty a lot with the vlog because it's also quite laid back and stuff just because that's how we are as people. It looks like it's all really easy, but the hard work goes in. Like the amount of times Rob's texting me at like 20 past one in the morning with an idea or sending me through a file that we need or, you know, we're both talking about emails at 2 a.m. and stuff like that. It's hard work. Like whatever industry you're going to is pretty much hard work. Usually if you get a, if you, that's if you're going into business on your own. If you get a job, then obviously you can do the nine to five, whatever it is that you need to do. But if any of you are thinking of going freelance and stuff, um, I'd definitely start looking into discipline over motivation. Yeah. What would you say is like the best way to stay disciplined? The best way to stay disciplined is to keep everything as simple as possible. So what I do, I've literally got from 7am till midnight a list of things that I want to do every single day. So that's like between 7 and 10, I want to make sure I've had breakfast and been to the gym. And this doesn't happen every day, I'm still nowhere near every day. But as often as I can, I need to do that by 10. I need to be at office for 10, unless we've got things like today where you're out early or we've got a, a video shoot. Um, and then like 10 till quarter to five is work, 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 work. And then at that time, I go and pick my mother-in-law up usually. Again, that doesn't happen every day, but most of the time. And then I have a few hours. It sounds a bit weird because like I literally have time slots to spend with my kids, <laughs> which is unless they've got other things and then obviously they're tech priority but then like i have a time sort for family time so i eat my tea play with the kids see my wife and stuff like that then i, I do loads of gaming on a night as well from like 10 till midnight then go to bed start again but, and what i know is on the days where i'm struggling with motivation i think but well, that's the plan to get to where i want to go and i know where i want to go i want to earn a certain amount of money every single month to live the life that i want to live so you've kind of got like a checklist for everything yeah that's it. And it's really simple as well. So I just think, oh, just get up at seven. Just get up at the same, same time every day. And then that's ticked off. And then I go, oh, look, it's 10 o'clock. I'm already in office. Take, done that. What work have I got to do? And just keeping it simple. Because I think people overcomplicate everything. And it's just like, just be simple. Figure out what you want to do. Understand what's enough for you as well. 
So like, I don't, I'm not out here going, oh, I want to earn the same money as Elon Musk. It's all right, cool. Well, I'll never see my kids ever again because I'm going to have to work 24 seven. So I think, well, that's not what I want to do. So you kind of trade off. How much time and effort do I want to put into something? What results do I think that'll give me along the line? And then literally just do it. Make the decision, just do it. I hope that weren't proper boring. I know it's like sitting and listening to someone chat shit for two hours. I'm sure some of it were helpful. Well, that's it, some people fighting more others. I hope you enjoyed that. Maybe some insightful stuff, maybe a load of waffle, who knows? And I've got a mouth of food. Of vlog. I'm gonna party until I drop. When I begin, I don't know how to stop. I can party on till the morning comes, till the sun goes up, we don't stop, no.